Hi all. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the tools that we're going to use in this uh, in this class. Um, so as you've probably seen already, we're going to be dealing with databases. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, SQL. Um, we talk about kind of a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of different things. Um, so uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, about uh, some of the tools, a couple of the tools that we're going to use. Um, first of all, as I said, we need a database, um, and there's a number of different ways we can do this. One of the uh, one of the perhaps most convenient ways is to uh, is to use uh, this uh, this here. It's called Zamp, um, and so you know if you click on this link uh, in our course, uh, you'll see. Whoop, there we are. Um, takes you basically to this page. Okay, so what this is, this is actually a a, a whole stack of uh, of programs for. Doing full-on web and database development. Um, the the main part that uh, that we're interested in is uh, is this one here. That is MariaDB, um, and uh, and so this will give us a way of basically using that. Um, the other thing that we're going to uh, that we're going to make use of is uh, is something called DBeaver. And DBeaver, all that is, it's a uh, it's a it's a little GUI for being able to connect to a number of different back uh, database backends um, for. For, uh, for playing around with SQL and so forth. Okay, so um, in terms of downloading uh, DBeaver and all that, so you just go to the uh, to the download link. Um, you'll notice uh, basically it is a Java program. Okay, so that means you have to have uh, you have to have the JRE, the Java runtime environment, installed on your system. If you don't, that's fine. Notice there's there's uh, there's installers for um, that that include the JRE with it, so you can uh, you can just deal with uh, with that. In my case, I actually already have the JRE. JRE installed, and it's a 64-bit JRE, so this is the one that I have downloaded here. Um, it's actually right here in uh, in downloads. Right there's my uh, there's my zip there. As for Zamp, um, there's a couple of different ways you can you can use it. Uh, the one the way that I typically use it, um, I I don't actually do the uh, do the install directly. Okay, so I'll kind of show you what uh, what what we basically do. Right, so here it is. Here's uh, the five six two eight. Um, right, just as uh, just as I set up here, that's the one that we're going to use. Right, you'll notice there is one for Windows, but that's actually the installer itself. Um, and as I said, I don't really necessarily want to uh, want to install that directly. Um, so let me see. I think I can just click on this here. Oh, yeah, there it goes. It's actually downloading that. <clears throat> let me go back. Looks like they changed it up. Oh, probably to go to download. There we are. Okay, so now that I'm on the download page, um, basically, notice again, if, if you're fine installing it, you know, if, if you're okay with, with just having it sit there, you know, that's fine. Um, but if uh, if you tend to switch between different computers or do things like that, um, or, you know, you're just kind of, you don't really like to have to install all manner of different uh, stuff onto your system, that's fine too, okay? You can, you can do basically what I do, which is, um, so I'm gonna go to, uh, I'm gonna go to more downloads here. And uh, so I'll scroll down. So in my case, I need a uh, ZAMP for Windows. And uh, like we said, so that's the 5628 version. And I'm going to scroll down through here, right? And you'll see, you know, there's all this stuff here. Let me, uh, I can do a sort of sort by, uh, by date so that, uh, so that I can get the, uh, the absolute uh, latest version, which is up here, right? So, so the, the main difference between the ones from, uh, from the, the 22nd of December uh, and the other ones um, have to do with, uh, have to do with um, basically you'll see this little version uh, dash one in here okay so if you want uh, if you want kind of your own uh, your the the portable version um, you can basically uh, just download this one here that's the actual uh, zip file that's that's the one that uses a uh, zip compression okay so you download that and as I said um, I've already actually done that uh, so I do have that here in um, in my uh, in my downloads folder Okay, so now I don't really have to install anything all I really need to do is unzip these things okay so a um, couple of words about that. Generally, uh, in Windows, the uh, the zip utility that comes bundled with Windows kind of sucks. And so for some of these things that are a little bigger, it takes a little bit more time. I mean, it, it'll work. It's just it's going to take longer. Uh, so if you're like me, you're impatient and all of that, um, go ahead and download 7-zip and, and use that on this, um, which is basically what I'm going to do here, right? So I'm just going to right-click. And I already have 7-zip installed. Notice I'm just going to say Open Archive. And then I'm just going to take XAMPP and drag it to where I want it. And I'm I'm just dumping it on, on my desktop. Okay, so you'll see it'll kind of chug away for a little bit. Um, but overall, it's not too bad. If you use the, the Windows zip utility for this, it, it takes longer.
Right. And again, if you if you wanted a sort of truly portable environment, what you would actually do is you would do this this unzipping to uh, to your uh, to a flash drive. All right. So that's almost there. Yep, there we go. Okay, so let me close uh, close these sevens apart. Right, so there's Zamp. Now it's not quite installed just yet. So I've so I have uh, so I've done the uh, I've done the unzipping. The other thing that you need to do the first time uh, the first time you sort of unzip it and all, um, basically it kind of needs to know where everything is and all that. Uh, so then you're going to run the setup Zamp batch file. Right, that is this thing here. And again, you only need to do this once. Okay, so there it goes. Notice it's doing its little configurations, etc. Right, and then it's done. Um, and uh, and now I should be able to uh, to run the Zamp the, the various programs that are part of Zamp. Okay, and the easiest way of dealing with that is uh, using the Zamp control panel. Okay, so if I go here to the Zamp control panel again, the first time you run it, it's going to ask you which language you want to use. Um, I'm speaking English, so I'll stick with that. Um, and here's what it looks like. Right, so here is uh, here's all of the uh, here's all of the different uh, tools that uh, that I can run from this. Um, notice this one doesn't have FileZilla or Mercury. I don't care. I don't, we don't really need that for this class, so it's fine. Um, there, it does say MySQL, although um, although technically they've actually changed over to MariaDB. Um, you know, if you're really interested, basically. Uh, MariaDB is sort of the new open source uh, uh, community version of, uh, of MySQL. You can kind of Google it to find out why, why people are sort of switching to that. Anyways, um, once I've done that, I can, uh, I can do start to start up MySQL. And um, and there it is. It should now be running on my system. Okay. So how do we interact with this? I mean, there's a bunch of different ways. I could actually start up the the web server and try using one of the uh, one of the web applications through there. And I'll show that to you in another video. Um, but I'm going to show you the main tool that uh, that we're going to use here, and that is DBeaver. Okay. So again, this is running. I'm just going to kind of minimize that. Uh, I'll just uh, close this uh, this window as well. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, how we can interface directly with uh, with with uh, the database uh, in Zamp. All right, so I'm just going to come back over here, and I'm just going to uh, grab up uh, DBeaver, and we'll just drag that out into uh, out back onto the desktop. That one's actually reasonably quick, as you can see. Um, anyways, so let's uh, come into here. And uh, so running this way simpler. Just uh, double click the uh, the exe. <clears throat> okay, so the first time we start this up, notice it's going to ask about uh, about creating a uh, a connection. If you if you didn't do this, I mean, that, if, if that didn't come up or whatever, um, that's easy enough, basically. And and later on, you're going to need to do this anyways. Um, so let's see. We'll go to uh, database. Sorry, database and uh, new connection. Right. And so here it's listing actually all of the different database backends that it's able to uh, that it's able to interact with. Okay. And and that's actually the nice thing about something like DBeaver. DBeaver uh, will uh, will you can use the same interface DBeaver itself to work with um, all of these various uh, all these various databases. Okay. So as I was saying. Um, it, with Zamp, there's been kind of a switch from MySQL. Even though in the even though in the in the control panel it actually says MySQL, it's really MariaDB. Technically speaking, they're supposed to be binary equivalent and and so forth. Um, but nevertheless, uh, since we know that we're dealing with uh, MariaDB, let's go ahead and uh, and use that one. Okay, so I'm going to select uh, that I'm using MariaDB, and I'm going to click next. Okay. Then it pops up. It says, "Okay, you know, where's uh, where's the server?" And this is actually one of the kind of cool things because uh, notice it, it's it's saying local host, basically saying that it's going to run on this machine, right? And what's uh, what's cool about this is the fact that uh, that we can actually use DBeaver to connect to databases that aren't running on this particular machine. Okay, um, database name. You know, if we if we already had a data um, a database created within that database system, we could actually put in the name here, and then it would connect directly to that particular database. Uh, since we're just starting up, we don't have that. Okay, username and password. Right. So username and password. You know, where do we get this? Well, again, we're going to go back. Over, I'm going to go over to my desktop. Going to go to Zamp, and uh, here in Zamp, 
I'm going to go to the passwords.txt file. Okay, so when I go here, all right, we see actually the first thing that comes up, uh, MySQL, uh, the username is root, and there is no password. Okay, so XAMPP is basically a, a development environment predominantly, not a, um, not a production environment. I mean, you can use all these same tools in a production environment, but you'll generally have uh, uh, various things, various uh, other things turned on, like not have uh, uh, no passwords, etc. If it really bothers you, you could actually set a password and so forth, um, but we're not going to worry about that right now. All right, so we know that the username is root. And we're going to put that in. Uh, password, uh, as I said, is empty. Um, and then notice, I can come down here, I can try to test the connection, right? So if I click Test Connection, um, the first thing it actually figures out is that we don't have the driver. Okay, so that's fine, right? Just click on the download button, and you'll notice there it goes. It downloaded that, um, and uh, yeah, it was in fact able to, co to connect, right? Once again, I can do test connection, and we see, yes, it is in fact able to connect to that, so we're good, right? Um, let me go ahead and just click next, right? There's uh, things like SSH tunneling. We'll actually see that later on when we look at uh, databases in the cloud. Um, and then we get down to our final creation, right? So um, the name is just uh, MariaDB-localhost, right? Um, yeah, I'm really doing using this as development. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, and click finish. Okay. So when I click when I click that, notice up here in the database navigator, I get uh, I get my little connection there, right? So I can uh, I can actually spin this open to see, okay, what databases are there in um, in the Maria database, right? And by default, we actually get uh, these ones. So information schema, MySQL, performance schema, PHP, MyAdmin, um, and then there's also a little test database as well. So each of these are databases themselves. And then in a particular one, so for instance, if I if I went, let's say, to PHP MyAdmin, I could look at uh, the tables that are part of that, right? And you see there's, a, there's actually a number of tables that are part of the PHP MyAdmin, um, the, the PHP MyAdmin uh, database, okay? So there's a bunch of stuff there. Again, you know, I can go to the test database. You see that there is no, there aren't any tables there, etc. Um, so that should give you an idea of uh, of how to get that stuff set up, right? And so basically, you know, as I said, uh, with the with the first project or with the first uh, assignment, um, essentially what you want to show is, you know, something like this that shows, yeah, you're connected with uh, with Maria database um, and so forth. Um, like that, and you also want to be able to see uh, in that screenshot uh, this here, right? So if you give me a screenshot sort of like this, um, right? Notice showing MySQL's running. There's uh, the connection through that. That's uh, that's basically good. Okay, a um, couple of other things just uh, for, you know, how to shut down and all that. Um, DBeaver will remember your connection. So, uh, for instance, you know, when I close this, uh, you'll see if I, uh, if I decide to, uh, if I ran DBeaver again, I don't have to do the whole uh, set up another connection to uh, to to that database, right? There it is, um, and then again, I can just you know kind of spin this open and and work with that. Um, so that's nice. And uh, then you know when you're done with uh, when you're done with your database, you can uh, you can just uh, click stop here to shut down MySQL, and then just quit the control panel, and you're good to go. Okay. So in the next video, I'll show you a little bit about how to use. Um, dbeaver to interact directly uh, with the database for doing some of the things that uh, that you saw in um, in chapter one of the book